Ugh. Here we are again. Another Cauldron game. Cauldron Games has kind of become the LJN of this channel. But this is the last one! <laughs> hey, Derek here, and you heard right. I don't have any other Cauldron games to cover unless I really wanted to cover the Cabela's hunting games and I just don't ever see me doing that. Anyway, I apparently put off the worst one for last because my gosh, this game is bad. This game is Secret Service and people have been requesting it for many years now. I've just been procrastinating. I like how I have this big beefed up PC and I'm here playing Cauldron games. At least it makes for good content. Before I dive into how bad and miserable this game is, let's talk about something good that I actually enjoy. My sponsor sent me this, which I quite like because it has a reptile on it. Don't know why I would favor reptiles. Nope, absolutely no reason to be biased. If you want this shirt or a shirt like this, well, Into the AM is having a huge July 4th sale. 20% off site-wide, just everything. Now, I swear by these shirts. I've mentioned it many times before. I use them to go mountain biking. They're incredibly soft, they're flexible, they stretch, and they stay soft no matter how many times you wash them. I've caught these things on branches as I've been riding my bike by. They've had so much dirt caked into them and they still look brand new after I wash them. There's also hoodies and tank tops and some windbreakers, so if you don't want shirts, there's something else there too. If you're watching this after the sale, don't fret. You can get 10% off if you go to my link into the am.com slash dragon shirts or just click the link down below in the video information. So yeah, this really is a good deal I would highly recommend. Huge thanks to Into the End for sponsoring this video. Oh, now let's go back to Secret Service. Secret Service. Let me save you some time. The PC release has every problem any other Cauldron game has. Again, it surprisingly has an option for 1440 and there are some graphics options, but if your FPS goes above 60, you can't shoot the enemy. You also become an astronaut when you die. And there's no vertical sync option in game. You'll have to find some way to lock your frame rate to 60. I use the Nvidia control panel and it fixes all these problems. I also turned on vSync in the Nvidia control panel because there's horrible screen tearing if you don't. Again, I don't usually like doing this because it makes weird input lag, but this game has mouse acceleration and aiming doesn't feel that good to begin with. The FOV is awful and you have no way to change it, that's expected. Even with all these shortcomings, it's still somehow better than the console versions. They managed to mess them all up. This game is Abandonware, so getting it is surprisingly easy. You can go to websites like myabandonware.com, download it, install it, and then it just works. So at least it has that going for it. As for the graphics, well, I mean, I've seen worse. I've seen better, but I've seen worse. This released in 2008 and yeah, I really don't have much to say here. It really isn't that bad for a game in 2008, but nothing stands out. It has tons of audio issues like all their other releases though. The mixing is very weird, and if you try to adjust it in-game, then you just can't hear anything. Explosions will be loud, but gun sound effects will be really quiet. It's strange. You just have to keep it at max volume and adjust your Windows volume mixer. So, yeah, bad PC release, mediocre graphics, about what you would expect from Cauldron. But what about the story? Yeah, it's just as bad, and it's so boring. I'll be honest, I have no clue what the hell is happening. You play as someone in the Secret Service protecting the president. A concept for a game that gets more interesting as time passes due to the current political climate. However, this game is obsessed with exposition dumps that tell you so much while telling you absolutely nothing that you'll just be confused. The newly independent Republic of Costa Centava discovers massive oil deposits and rapidly enters the world trade markets. Oil will dominate Costa Centavan politics for the next century. There's some uprising in another country that has to do ties with someone on the inside. I don't know what's going on. Really, the main important thing to know here is that it's just so boring. They tell you everything. They don't show you anything. Anytime the plot is supposed to advance, it's just someone talking in your earpiece. They talk for so long that you will frequently be stuck standing in place because you walked all the way across the map and are at the exit and they just won't stop talking. Some of these levels quite literally only load so you can walk and listen to them talk, and then once you reach that exit, it just loads the next level. I cannot stress how much I don't care. I can't walk anymore. Maybe even only one rung from the top. Watch what you say, and who you say it to. It's probably gonna load the moment we get out of this cutscene, because it's just waiting for it to stop talking. No, is it done? Can I walk? There we go, I can keep going now. And now it's gonna load. The whole point of that level was just to have them talk. 
and they took away my guns. What was the point? It wasn't even like I didn't try. I wanted to listen because I wanted to see how ridiculous it was, but my gosh, it's just so boring. Even more confusingly, they somehow got Nolan North to voice act a main character in this game. Let's just move on to the gameplay, and it somehow gets worse. Now, the core gameplay loop is pretty standard for a cauldron game. Almost every gun feels practically identical. You can hip fire from about any range and have it be effective. At least there's proper ADS this time instead of that weird zoom thing that the other ones had. But I only felt like I needed to ADS half the time because hip fire is still pretty accurate if you're standing still. And it really didn't seem to matter whether I was using an Asari for or an SMG at range, like everything seemed to kill just as fine. The only exceptions were the shotgun and the sniper. The shotgun, because, well, it's a shotgun, so it only works up close. The sniper, however, was overpowered as hell. It may not have a crosshair while you're hip firing, but it's still 100% accurate. And other than that, it will just kill everything in one shot. If you have this gun, you should use it. It's blatantly the best one in the game. Grenades, on the other hand, are a little weirder than Cauldron's other games. You can't throw them very far, and their physics make no sense. In fact, the physics in this game just as a whole don't make any sense. Wow, what kind of grenade physics is that? And then he just yeeted himself. What? Why are they doing that? As for the enemies, well, you're going to be fighting the same enemy the whole game. There is no variety here. I know these enemies may look different, but they're just reskins. They all do the same thing. They'll all either sit behind cover, popping out to shoot at you, stand in the open shooting at you, or run straight at you. They're incredibly dumb. That was a terrible shot. Where are you going? What? what? Oh, he ran into the electric fence? <laughs> what smart AI? Uh, that wasn't my taser. I would love to throw a grenade up there. What's this guy? There's two of them. It's just some smoke in a blue color. Oh, ow. Brilliant AI. Absolutely brilliant. Hi, what are you what are you doing? You uh you having fun? Oh my god, there's more than one there! <laughs> That's his gun! Amazing. Your friendly AI isn't any smarter, and they love to repeat the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah, I get it. It was a nice shot. Can you chill? I'm not that good. Nice shot. Your melee in this game is a little bit different. You have a taser. That seems pretty cool. Just be able to tase someone whenever you want, except it's really inconsistent. Your reach is a lot shorter than it looks. So one of two things will happen. You hit them and instantly kill them from a taser, or you just whiff them and die, which is the much more likely result. But if that's all this was, it would just be a normal cauldron game. Not really much to talk about, just a very mediocre, boring game. They tried to spice this one up, make it a little less monotonous, give you a bit of diversity in its gameplay. Yeah, it made it way worse. The most obvious thing they did to try to change the pacing is add a hacking mini game. Oh boy. Oh boy, a hacking mini game. Everyone loves these. It literally says rules of the mini game. They don't even like try to put any immersion into the game. It's just here's a mini game. <laughs> what? Why? why? Why would you do that? You are going to get so sick of this damn mini game. Anything you need to do, you'll need to hack it like this, and it never changes. It just gets bigger. Computer, hack it. Bomb, hack it. Actually, that's all you're hacking. You just hack those two things a lot. If you fail, there's not really much punishment. A few enemies come out, you shoot them, then you try to hack again. It quite literally is just getting the electrical flow to the other circuits. But don't let it go to the red ones, because that makes you fail. And you're on a timer. You have failed. All right, let's see the explosion. Bomb arms. <laughs> you could have survived anything except death. No shit. Oh boy. Like, how is this entertaining? This is just wasting my time. This is padding out the time of the game. That's it. I mean, look what this turns into by the end of the game. Does this seem fun? Oh my god, no! Why? Look at how fucking huge this is! That's what she said. The next change is that they give you night vision goggles in a game that's never dark. Oh, it's not for the darkness. It's so that you can see laser trip mines. You have to activate night vision to see these laser trip mines. Otherwise, you just walk straight into them. There was a laser trip mine there. Cool. 
To make things even better, the night vision is on recharge. It's a rechargeable flashlight. Why? You know those puzzles in the original Half-Life where you have to avoid all the laser trip mines or the whole building blows up? You know how that was only just like a one-off thing? Yeah, well that's like half of this game. So anytime you're going anywhere, you're going to be terrified that you run into a laser trip mine, so you have to be forced to turn the night vision on even though it's not even dark. Again, why? Who thought this was fun? And the last thing they did to try to mix up your gameplay is that they force you to not use your guns and fail you instantly if you do. The reason for this is that apparently there's other secret service members that you can't kill. They're part of yours. You can't kill them. So then why are they shooting at me? If we're on the same team, why are they hostile? Not only does this not make sense, but it's also just highly annoying. They phrase it like you can stealth by, but there's no way you're stealthing by these enemies. Everyone immediately sees you. Your option is to just use this taser. This taser has an incredibly slow projectile, and you have to taser so many of these enemies. This is not just a one room thing. This is almost the entire last half of the game. This is all you're going to be doing. Like, holy shit, who thought this would be fun? At some point, these enemies are even mixed in with normal enemies, so for some of them, you can shoot them with your regular gun, but for others, you have to use the taser. Somehow, Cauldron managed to make a game worse than a boring, monotonous game. They made a boring, annoying, tedious, monotonous game. This game will only last you three hours, but after every level, you'll find yourself saying, it's not done yet. It just feels like it keeps going on and on. Hell, at one point, they had me defend this balcony for a defense segment. I kill all the people there. They tell me to continue on, and then this happens. Really? Really? We, we, we go right back and do the defense section again. Same place as last time. The same thing. Twice in a row. So you start another defense section! Why? This is blatantly padding time. It's so boring. They even tried to copy the Call of Duty turret helicopter segment. Except for it's so much worse. You know it's bad when I'm telling you it's worse than an on-a-rail section in another game. Out of all the Cauldron games I've played, this is definitely the worst. I'd still rather play this than Chaser, but that's also because Chaser is like 10 hours long or something like that. Dark eye. And this is at least done after three hours. So you only suffer for so long. Either way, don't play it. I don't recommend it. Even though you can play it for free, it's not worth it. That's torturing yourself. All I have to say is thank goodness I'm done with Cauldron Games. Now we can move on to other bad games, probably. I'm gonna try to play some good ones. I, I wanna mix them in. Just please watch the good ones too instead of just the bad ones. But at least. We're done with Cauldron. Huge thanks to Into the AM for sponsoring this video. As a reminder, 20% off site-wide for the July 4th sale. So be sure to check that link down below in the video information or pinned comment. Also, a big thanks for everyone that kept me sane while I was playing this game on Twitch. If you want to follow me on Twitch, my Twitch is twitch.tv slash Jared for Gaming Dragon. If you subscribe on Twitch, you get to see my videos at minimum one week ahead of time. And of course, thank all of you for watching this video and making sure me suffering through this game was worth it. See you next time.